Good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sabado. Feliz Sabado. How's everybody doing today? Good. God is awesome, right? We're here to praise the mighty name of Jesus. We are to praise God every day. Amen? God is good. We have a brother. I'll, I'll introduce uh, Brother Isaiah here in a minute. But before we get to that, welcome to Christian Lighthouse Church. Oh, yeah. This is your church. Feel uh, welcome here at home. Amen. Amen. Uh, the bathrooms are back towards my left, back towards around that, that corner right there. My name is uh, Pastor Juan, and this is my lovely wife, Leanne. Amen. You want to raise your hand? Amen. <laughs> All right. And uh, welcome to Christian Lighthouse Church. Amen. At this time, we're going to do praise and worship music, and I want to hear everybody sing on top of their lungs. Amen? Amen. Because we're here to praise God. It's not about us. It's oh, all yeah, about yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, Se trata yeah. todo de Dios, ¿verdad? So hay que adorar a Dios mm -hmm. y cantarle a Él. My lovely wife's going to pass around these uh, sheets. Amen. We're going to be doing the first song, and we're going to be also doing the third song. Amen. All right, let us stand as we sing, This is Amazing Grace. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, become, we come before your presence, yes. and we invite your Holy Spirit, Lord. Speak to us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your Sabbath day. Thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. We don't deserve any of it, but yet we're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, touch our hearts today. Whether it be the music or the message, let it touch our heart, Father. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce a special friend of ours. <laughs> He's originally from here, Amarillo, right? Yes. All right. And his ministry has carried him all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Amen. And um, his name is Isaiah Carter. Amen. What God called you to do is ministry, brother. Yes, uh, God bless my friends and brother and sister, um, one and his beautiful wife, and saw their marriage and was at their marriage. And seen many things have happened since then, but God has blessed us both, our families. And I'm happy to be here in Amarillo, Texas again. Uh, certainly, God has gave me a ministry out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're getting ready to kick out the ministry again at this barbershop called 3D uh, uh, Cut Min uh, Barbershop. After the barbershop closed on Tuesday night, we're ministering and singing and UFC fighters and all kind of people will be coming there to just hear the Lord and hear what the Lord is saying to the people of Albuquerque. So I just ask for y'all prayers. Thank y'all for having me here. I'm just excited to be with y'all today. Amen. Hey Amen. I don't know if y'all caught that. He said UFC fighters. Mm -hmm. He comes across famous UFC oh, yes. fighters and he ministers on them. Yes. They have a barber shop there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, yes. And a lot of the UFC fighters and other people stop by that oh, famous yes. barber shop. Oh, yeah. And they have a place of worship yes. in the back, right? Oh, yeah. And on Tuesday nights, they <laughs> oh. get down like James Brown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. At this time, we're going to do a little uh, praise and worship. Mm -hmm. He's going to do a little bit of praise and worship. So let us sing along as he does that. And then after children's story, then uh, he'll do his special music. Amen. God oh, bless you. Certain all of y'all know this song because we grew up with this song and some of the young people probably heard the song, especially from Mahala Jackson. She sung to the little children and it just touched my heart. And she's gone to be with the Lord as well, but, but she was a spiritual singer and I just was inspired when I heard her singing a song like this. He got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole wide world. Come on. In his hand. He got the whole world. Come on. In his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. I believe that. He got the little bitty baby. I'll sing them. Yeah. 
Your oldest son's house collapsed, wow. killing all of your children. Oh, wow. So you can imagine how Job feels. He lost all of his servants. He lost all of his his uh, livestock. He he lost all his children. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so he he loses everything. He doesn't have a home. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he, his wife left him or not. Um, oh, she did. She's with him. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he he was filled with grief. You can see that oh, yeah. over here. He's just filled with nothing but grief and sadness, but he doesn't curse God. Dumb. He doesn't blame nothing on him. He says, he says, I came into this world with nothing and I will leave with nothing and all praise will be to God. And so God said, uh, God said, see Satan, he's a better man than you thought. And Satan said, I only took away his physical stuff. I never took away his sickness. I never, uh, I never took away his health. Uh, and so God said, so God said, uh, do you think if you ruin his health, that will have any effect on this righteous man? Mm. Do whatever you like, but do not kill him. No, so Satan immediately returns to uh, earth and strikes Job, uh, Job with terrible open sores from head oh, to foot. Yeah. He curses Job with insomnia, and whenever he does sleep, he has terrible nightmares. Oh, so he's covered head to toe in painful sores. He has insomnia, so he has horrible uh, ability to sleep, and when he does sleep, he has terrible nightmares. Now, imagine Satan does all this to him, and Job, um, Job still does not complain, but his wife, mm -hmm. his wife says, everything we owned and everything, everyone we love is gone. Surely this disease was kill you. You should just curse God and die. Wow. And Job looked at his wife and out of painful, blistered eyes said, mm -hmm. don't be a fool. We cannot accept the good things from God without also accepting the bad. And so Job um, sits with his wife and next to all of his um, rubble, of what used to be his home and his, uh, his family, and his friends came and sat with him and said, uh, Job said, I have done nothing wrong. Why is God letting all these terrible mm -hmm. things happen to me? And his friends started to prophesy to him. Do, do, uh, don't let get upset, Job. From everything I've seen, God doesn't punish innocent people. He said, you must have done something wrong. Come on, come and so even his friends are coming after him. His wife mm -hmm. first uh, was telling him to turn against God, now his friends. Mm -hmm. And Job says, uh, uh, Job starts to get upset. He says, what kind of friends are you? Mm -hmm. He said, I just wish God would come down and tell me for um, himself what I did, mm -hmm. what I did wrong. So he is getting a little bit upset at this point. And then God says, stand up on your feet like a man. I will question uh, you, Job, and you will answer me. Mm -hmm. And so God talks to him, and Job accepts what he did, and he apologizes. He said, Lord, I've, I spoke about things I didn't understand. Please forgive me. Mm. After that, God heals Job. Heals. He gives him twice as many animals mm. he had lost and gives him ten more children. Mm. Job lives for a long time after this. I don't remember exactly what age he lived to, but he lived for hundreds of years. And so this story talks about how, um, how what Job said. He said, we cannot accept the good things from God without also accepting the bad. Mm -hmm. So this story should be a good, uh, a good uh, lesson to all of us, that we Beautiful. need to accept the good things uh, along with the bad. Okay? Thank you, Vanessa. Awesome. This time we're going to have a, a brother Isaiah do um, some more music for us. And he's going to do special music for us. As we're blessed by the music that he presents. Mm -hmm. Take this. 
We just want to make it all about you and not about us, Lord. We want to praise your name. We want to be fed by your word. And we want to be guided by you. And we ask that the Holy Spirit guide us in everything that is done in your service today, Lord. We thank you and we pray that our ears are open. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's sermon title is called The Four Soils. All right. All right. Amen. How many of y'all have one of these? Mm -hmm. A Bible. Bible. ¿Cuántos de ustedes tienen una Biblia? Yes. It's important for us to have the Word of yes. God. Oh, yeah. God preserved this Word of the, the Bible for us to have oh, yeah. and for Him to communicate to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We communicate to him uh, with him through prayer, but we also communicate with him through his word. The Bible says that the word became flesh and he died. This word that we hold here today, the Bible that we hold in our hands today, mm -hmm. represents Jesus Christ. Yes. This is a love letter to you and to me. God wants to tell us things. God wants to show us things. Oh, yeah. Amen? There are so many things in the name of Christianity out there that have nothing to do with Christianity. Uh -huh. How do we know if it's what God is trying to tell us? Mm -hmm. The Bible. The Amen? Bible. Amen. Yes. Almost all Bibles out there from Genesis to Revelation are the same. The same. There's a few... There are a few words that are changed a little bit, or a few words that are taken out. Mm -hmm. But in general, mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation, they all say the same thing. Yes, God will speak to you mm -hmm. if you allow Him to speak oh, to you. Amen? Right. We need God's Word. Oh, yeah. Man died for you to have this uh, Bible in your hands mm -hmm. today. Gente murió para que usted tuviera esta Biblia en sus manos. Estoy hablando un poco en español porque hay alguien aquí que no más habla en español. Yeah. Pero la Biblia es importante. Dios quiere yeah. hablarte y quiere enseñarte cosas, lo que dice la palabra de Dios. Yes. Amen. Thank you. So let's go, uh, let's, let's start this sermon now, right? Okay. This is called the good news. Why? The good news. Sometimes when we hear something we don't want to hear, a veces cuando oímos algo que no queremos oír, we don't think it's good news. When our parents tell us, don't do this or don't do that, we think it's bad news. Cuando nuestros parentes nos dicen algo, creemos que son malas noticias. Pero no, son buenas noticias. It's good news. It's good news. Why? Because God wants to save you. God wants to come into your heart and save you. Amen? Oh, yes. He wants to deliver you. He don't just want to save you. He wants to deliver you uh -huh. from whatever sin you're facing. Oh, yes. Whatever addictions you have in your oh, life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever ways you were raised with. Mm. Brother John, me and him go back a ways. Wow. Back when we worked at Anderson Merchandisers. Okay. Me and John were terrible. Oh, <laughs> we were terrible. Mm. We both had long hair. <laughs> we come in, the music stopped. Oh, <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, mm -hmm. we we have our ways, and a lot of you have your ways, right? Oh, yes. We come from a bad background, oh, yes. and some of you might say, "Well, I wasn't as bad as so and so." Yeah. We were all bad. Oh yes. We were we're all sinners. Amen. Sinners. We all come short of the glory of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. The Bible can remove your depression. Oh, yeah. If God can heal and do all these miracles that we read in the Bible, mm. you think He cannot remove your depression? He can. Hallelujah. Call out to Him, right? Oh, yes. He can remove your bitterness. Oh, yeah. Have on. you ever been around somebody that's mad all the time? Oh, yeah. And I mean, you're in a good mood, you walk in, and then. They're mad all the, time. all the time. It changes. It, it kind of rubs off on you eventually, oh, right? Oh, yeah. We don't want that. God can remove. Maybe you're the person that's bitter. God can remove that bitterness from you and make you a happy person, right? Yeah. God can move. Uh, God can uh, remove that emptiness. Yeah. That's what most people struggle with: is that emptiness. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. I feel empty inside. Yes. I've been hurt. Yes. I've been hurt with uh, my wife cheating on me, or I've been hurt with my husband Amen. cheating on me, mm. or I've been hurt with by what family has done to me. Damn. A veces que muchas cosas que la familia los hacen, verdad, y, y los sentimos vacíos. <laughs> los sentimos que no 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 tenemos nada en nuestro corazón. Pero Dios puede llenar esa eso, ese corazón vacío. Dios puede entrar a tu corazón y llenarte del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Mm -hmm. God can remove your sadness. Yes. God can remove your sadness. And many more things that Jesus Christ can do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Jesus wants to come into your heart and he will not force himself. So how do we receive him? Mm -hmm. How do we receive God into our heart? You know, God is a gentleman. Oh, yeah. God is king. He could easily come in here and, and demand and force things. But God is a gentleman. Oh, Even yeah. though he's king of kings and lord of lords, he's a gentleman. Gentle. He will come to you and say, this is what I have for you, oh, yeah. but I'm not going to force it on you. And us as Christians, we should share the good news with other people, right? Oh, yeah. But not force it on them. There's times that we have to be a little stern because when we were in the streets, we were stern with certain things that meant a lot to us, right? So there's times you just got to pray and ask God, when do I need to be stern and when do I need to be loving? Amen? But in all of it, we need to be loving no matter what. We are to share the gospel, not in a forceful way, but in a loving way. And that's what Jesus Christ does with us. He invites us. He invites us. Dios nos habla y nos dice, ven, dame tu corazón, pero nunca se va a forzar en tu vida. Tú tienes que permitirle que entre tu corazón. We have to allow Jesus Christ to come into our heart. But you know what? He's going to keep knocking. He's going to keep knocking. He's going to keep knocking day after day after day. And you might even get annoyed by it. You might get annoyed by it, right? Yeah. I know I would get annoyed sometimes. Like, all right, Lord. All right. I need to let this go. I need to stop smoking weed. I don't care what anybody says today. That weed helps people in this and that. It's a drug. It's a drug. If it's used for natural, if you know, to put it as a lotion or anything like that, maybe. But to smoke, the Bible says never to smoke anything. Smoking anything is, is, is destruction to our body. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. But God, ha God asked me, let that go. Let that go. And I have to listen to God. I would come to church high as a kite. Mm -hmm. I would come to church hungover. You know, with drinking at a party the, the, the night before. Mm -hmm. But God kept talking to me. God oh, kept, God. The Holy Spirit kept convicting me and saying... Let that go. Amen? Amen? And God is trying to speak to you. I don't know what God is telling you. Maybe it's not that. Maybe God, all He's asking you is, give Him your heart. God is saying, trust me. I want to do something awesome with your life. Amen? Amen? And you know what? If God is king, what are we? We are royalty. We are prince, prince and princesses, right? So we're a part of the royal family. So you think he just wants a, a, something simple for you? God has awesome plans for you in your life. God can use you in a mighty way. You might say, well, I don't have the talent to sing like Brother Isaiah. Or you might say, I don't have, I don't have the words to preach. Come on. God uses you in the most amazing it's ways. Amazing. You know who was one of the most basic, stuttering, didn't have big words to say, and yet God used that person in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Guess who that was? Who was it? Moses. 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 All right. God told Moses, mm -hmm. I need you to go to Egypt go, go. and tell Pharaoh, let mm -hmm. my people go. Right. What did Moses say? I, I can't I can't speak, Lord. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it. Right. And God got firm with him. 
I'm asking you to go. You can do it. You can. You are my child. You're a prince. Amen? Come on. You're a prince. You are. He said, okay, I'll send your brother Aaron with you. All right. You know what? At first, Aaron started speaking, but Moses was doing the most of the speaking by the end of the day. Amen? Come on. Come on in, brother. Yes. By the end of the day, by the end of the day, oh. Moses was doing all the talking. He didn't need his brother Aaron after all, right? Yeah. So a lot of us are scared when we want to minister to somebody. Mm -hmm. We want to share something with somebody. Beautiful. We say, I don't have the words. I'm a shy person. But God will give you the ability to share the gospel oh. with somebody. Amen? Amen? God is awesome. Amen. But God wants to come into your heart. God wants to speak to us. How do we allow him to do that? How do we allow, them to allow him to do that? Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13. Okay. This is where we're going to spend most of our time. So if you want to mark your Bible right there, okay. Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 to 9. Okay. We are a Bible-based church. Okay. I could stand up here and entertain you all day. I don't want to entertain you all day. I don't want to just shout. I don't want to just sing. Right. I don't want to just jump up and down, Come which on. is fine to do. Right. But we are here to be fed by the Word of God, yeah. brother Zed. All right. Amen. Right. Matthew chapter 13, mm -hmm. verse 3 to 9 says, mm -hmm. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, oh. in examples, that's what it means, oh. saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed, some seed fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth on the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, and they withered away. And some fell on the thorns and on on the thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them mm. but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop and some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty these who hear he who hears he who has ears hear let him hear, let him hear. Let him hear. amen oh, so this is talking about the four soils in the Bible. The four different types of soils in the Bible. Amen? Right. So God is trying to speak to us. Dios está tratando de hablarnos a nuestro corazón, ¿verdad? Apenas leímos en el libro de Mateo 13, 3 al 9. God is trying to tell us how we are to receive Him. Amen? Wow. Which type of soil or which type of ground will you be? Yes. How will you receive God? Oh. And we're going to break down these four soils. Before we break down this parable, this parable, let's be clear on something. The seed that's being planted is the Word of God. Oh, the seed that this farmer or this sower went to go sow, he went, was passing around and he was throwing the seed over here, he was throwing the seed over there, and he was throwing the seed everywhere he could, right? The seed is the word of God. It's the gospel. It's the good news. Amen? So we are to share the gospel everywhere we're at. Everywhere. If you're sitting down at a restaurant, you're a walking testimony. People are watching you. Oh, yeah. And we might say, well, I ain't worried about what people think. But we should be worried about what God thinks. Amen? We should be worried about what God thinks because that's what, that's what uh, is more important. So you're a walking testimony whether you're at a restaurant, whether you're visiting somebody, whether you're hanging out at a football game. How are you acting before the crowd? You're a walking testimony. You're sharing the gospel and you don't even know it. No importa donde estamos, tú eres un testimonio para Dios. Tú estás enseñando la palabra de Dios y ni, y ni lo sabes. Por como los portamos. Amen. We are a walking testimony. We share the gospel. So we are to share the gospel with everybody. It doesn't matter what they look like, that's where they right. come from. We are to share the gospel All with right. everybody. Right. And that's what this sower was doing. That's what this farmer was doing. Oh, yeah. He was throwing seeds everywhere. 
And it says that the seeds fell on different places. Amen? The book, the Bible. This is the gospel. This sower or a farmer is sowing plant seed everywhere. He can and we should too. The Bible tells us in Matthew 28 verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All nations. Hispanics, blacks, whites, Asian. Amen? And if you're able to speak more than one language, that's a blessing. Oh, yeah. That's the gift of tongues, amen? Oh, yeah. That is the gift of tongues, and we are to share the gospel share. with everybody. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they look like. Yeah. Yes, we have different cultures, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm the, I like the lowrider style, Chicano <laughs> style, right? <laughs> um, we all have different cultures. cultures Some of y'all might be cowboys, I don't cowboys. know. <laughs> from the from the country or something, right? Well, we are in Texas. So. Oh, yeah. um, I was raised in, in Mexico. I was raised in Juarez. Oh, wow. I came over here at age 10. Wow. And I had to learn the ways of the United States. Oh, wow. My first language was Spanish. And I had to learn English. That's why maybe you catch some of the words I say not correctly, right? Oh, wow. But you know what? If God calls me to preach, I'm going to preach. It doesn't preach. matter if I can speak well or not. Mm -hmm. God is calling you to do something in your life. Oh yeah. You know what God is calling you to do in your life. Answer to Him and say, I will do it, Lord. I will do it. Oh, Amen? Yeah. So yes, we are to share the gospel, the goodness. But the parable is here is asking us, what, what type of ground are we? What type of soil are we? What soil? Let's break it down. Like James Brown. Yeah, break it down. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 13, verse 4, and it says, mm -hmm. And he sowed some of the seed fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and the birds came and devoured mm -hmm. them. Devour. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's explain this first type of uh, soil mm -hmm. where the seed fell at. Mm -hmm. It says... When this, seed, when this seed fell on the ground, immediately the yeah. birds came and ate it. Ate it. So what does this mean? Mm. These people heard the gospel. Okay? These people heard the gospel, but maybe they were curious about following God at first, right. but right away gave up. Mm. Maybe that's been you, or maybe that's been somebody you know of. Oh. Right? They heard the gospel... Oh, you know what? What the preacher is saying, that's true. What the Bible says, that's true. But that's not for me. That's not for me. La palabra de Dios dice aquí que esta semilla cayó en la tierra y que de repente vinieron los pájaros y se llevaron la semilla. Este tipo de gente son esos que oyen la palabra de Dios Yes. Y dicen, es verdad, pero eso no es para mí. Yes. They say, that is not for me. Uh -huh. Amen? These birds are symbolic for the devil and his fallen angels. Come on, come on. These birds come mm. and distract you and say, distract. you're not a church person. <laughs> That's not for you. Christianity is not for you. Come on, That's what these demons are telling you. Oh, yes. So we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, for those that just came Great in, words. and verse 4. Oh, yeah. The seed fell on the ground, and immediately the birds came and ate it. Immediately. <laughs> we don't want to be in that category, right? Oh, no. We want the gospel to take root in our life. Oh, yeah. We want to accept Jesus Christ in our life, right? Oh, yeah. Let's break down the second one. Matthew, chapter 13, 5 oh, and 6. Come on. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and immediately sprung up because they had no depth on the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root and they withered away. This seed fell on stony ground or on shallow ground. We know that we need plenty of dirt for the seed to grow, right? 
where the root wasn't deep enough. So when the sun came up, it scorched it up. It burned it up. It's like, you know, if, if a plant is not watered enough, yeah. it's not planted in the right soil, mm -hmm. the sun will burn it up. Oh. Right? These kind of people is those that get excited at first. Mm -hmm. They seem to be on fire for God. Oh, yeah. They even, they're so excited, they go buy a new Bible. <laughs> they're telling everybody, I have accepted Jesus Christ into my life. Come on. I have accepted God into my life. They're excited. They're, excited. they're telling everybody, they're calling everybody on their phones, mm -hmm. getting on Facebook. Yeah. Man, I have given my life to God. I've got, I'm going to be baptized. I'm on fire for God. Amen? Mm -hmm. But then, but. this is what happens. They base their relationship with God only on their emotions. Yes. We are not to base our relationship God, with God only on our emotions. Mm -hmm. Because we need to be rooted on the Bible, on the Word of God. I want to share something with somebody. Beautiful. We say, I don't have the words. I'm a shy person. But God will give you the ability to share the gospel with somebody. Amen? Amen. God is awesome. Amen. But God wants to come into your heart. God wants to speak to us. How do we allow Him to do that? How do we allow, them to, allow Him to do that? Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Okay. This is where we're going to spend most of our time. So if you want to mark your Bible right there, okay. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 3 to 9. Okay. We are a Bible-based church. I could stand up here and entertain you all day. I don't want to entertain you all day. I don't want to just shout. I don't want to just sing. Right. I don't want to just jump up and down, Come which is fine to do. Right. But we are here to be fed by the Word of God, Amen. brother. Is that all right? Amen. Right. Matthew chapter thirteen, mm -hmm. verse three to nine says, mm -hmm. "Then he spoke many things to them in parables, mm -hmm. in examples. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow." And he sowed some seed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth on the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, and they withered away. And some fell on the thorns and on on the thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Mm. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, and some a hundredfold, and some sixty, and some thirty. These who hear, he who hears, he who has ears, hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Amen. Amen. So this is talking about the four soils in the Bible. The four different types of soils in the Bible. Amen. So God is trying to speak to us. Dios está tratando de hablarnos a nuestro corazón, ¿verdad? Apenas leímos en el libro de Mateo 13, 3 al 9. God is trying to tell us how we are to receive Him. Amen? Wow. Which type of soil or which type of ground will you be? Yes. How will you receive God? Oh. And we're going to break down these four soils. Before we break down this parable, this parable, let's be clear on something. The seed that's being planted is the Word of God. Amen. The seed that this farmer or this sower went to go sow, he went, was passing around and he was throwing the seed over here, he was throwing the seed over there, and he was throwing the seed everywhere he could, right? Mm -hmm. The seed is the Word of God, it's the gospel, it's the good news. Amen? So, we are to share the gospel everywhere we're at. Everywhere. If you're sitting down at a restaurant, you're a walking testimony. People are watching you. Oh, yeah. And we might say, well, I ain't worried about what people think. But we should be worried about what God thinks. Amen? We should be worried about what God thinks because that's what, that's what uh, is more important. So, you're a walking testimony whether you're at a restaurant whether you're visiting somebody, whether you're hanging out at a football game, how are you acting before the crowd? You're a walking testimony. You're sharing the gospel and you don't even know it. 
No importa dónde estamos, tú eres un testimonio para Dios. Tú estás enseñando la palabra de Dios y ni, y ni lo sabes por cómo nos portamos. Amen. We are a walking testimony. We share the gospel. So we are to share the gospel with everybody. It doesn't matter what they look like, that's where they right. come from. We are to share the gospel All with right. everybody. All And right. that's what this sower was doing. That's what this farmer was doing. Oh, yeah. He was throwing seeds everywhere. And it says that the seeds fell on different places. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. The book, the Bible. This is the gospel. This sower or a farmer is sowing plant seed everywhere. He can and we should too. The Bible tells us in Matthew 28 verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All nations. Hispanics, blacks, whites, Asian. Amen? And if you're able to speak more than one language, that's a blessing. Oh, yeah. That's the gift of tongues, amen? Oh, yeah. That is the gift of tongues, and we are to share the gospel share. with everybody. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they look like. Yeah. Yes, we have different cultures, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm the, I like the lowrider style, Chicano <laughs> style, right? <laughs> um, we all have different cultures. cultures Some cultures. of y'all might be cowboys, I don't cowboys. know. <laughs> from the from the country or something, right? Well, we are in Texas. So. Oh, yeah. um, I was raised in, in Mexico. I was raised in Juarez. Oh, wow. I came over here at age 10. Wow. And I had to learn the ways of the United States. Oh, wow. My first language was Spanish. And I had to learn English. That's why maybe you catch some of the words I say not correctly, right? Oh, wow. But you know what? If God calls me to preach, I'm going to preach. It doesn't matter if I can speak well or not. God is calling you to do something in your life. Oh yeah. You know what God is calling you to do in your life. Answer to Him and say, I will do it, Lord. I will do it. Oh, Amen? Yeah. So yes, we are to share the gospel, the goodness. But the parable is here is asking us, what, what type of ground are we? What type of soil are we? What soil? Let's break it down. Like James Brown. Yeah, break it down. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 13, verse 4, and he says, mm -hmm. And he sowed some of the seed fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and the birds came and devoured mm -hmm. them. Devoured. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's explain this first type of uh, soil mm -hmm. where the seed fell at. Mm -hmm. It says... When this, seed, when this seed fell on the ground, immediately the birds came and ate it. Ate it. So what does this mean? Mm. These people heard the gospel. Okay? These people heard the gospel, but maybe they were curious about following God at first, right. but right away gave up. Mm. Maybe that's been you, or maybe that's been somebody you know of. Oh. Right? They heard the gospel... Oh, you know what? What the preacher is saying, that's mm -hmm. true. true. What the Bible says, that's true. But that's not for me. Not for me. That's not for me. Mm. La palabra de Dios nos dice aquí que esto, esta semilla cayó en, 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 en la tierra y que de repente vinieron los pájaros mm -hmm. y se llevaron la semilla. Mm -hmm. Este tipo de gente son esos que oyen la palabra de Dios Yes. Y dicen, es verdad, pero eso no es para mí. Yes. They say, that is not for me. Uh -huh. Amen? These birds are symbolic for the devil and his fallen angels. Come on, come on. These birds come mm. and distract you and say, distract. you're not a church person. <laughs> That's not for you. Christianity is not for you. Come on, That's what these demons are telling you. Oh, yes. So we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, for those that just came Great in, words. and verse 4. Oh, yeah. The seed fell on the ground, and immediately the birds came and ate it. Immediately. <laughs> We don't want to be in that category, right? Oh, no. We want the gospel to take root in our life. Oh, yeah. We want to accept Jesus Christ in our life, right? Oh, yeah. Let's break down the second one. Matthew, chapter 13, 5 oh, and 6. Oh, yeah. 
Come on. Some fell on stony places oh. where they did not have much earth oh. and immediately sprung up because they had no depth on the earth. Mm -hmm. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because mm -hmm. they had no root mm -hmm. and they withered away. Oh. This seed fell on stony ground or on shallow ground. Mm -hmm. We know that we need plenty of dirt oh. for the seed to grow, right? where the root wasn't deep enough. So when the sun came up, it scorched it up. It burned it up. It's like, you know, if, if a plant is not watered enough, yeah. it's not planted in the right soil, mm -hmm. the sun will burn it up, mm -hmm. right? These kind of people is those that get excited at first. Mm -hmm. They seem to be on fire for God. Oh yeah. They even, they're so excited, they go buy a new Bible. <laughs> They're telling everybody, I have accepted Jesus Christ into my life. Come on. I have accepted God into my life. They're excited. They're, excited. they're telling everybody, they're calling everybody on their phones, mm -hmm. getting on Facebook. Yes. Man, I have given my life to God. I've got, I'm going to be baptized. I'm on fire for God. Amen? But then, but. this is what happens. They base their relationship with God only on their emotions. We are not to base our relationship God with God only on our emotions. Because we need to be rooted on the Bible, on the Word of God. We need to be rooted in Jesus Christ. We need Jesus Christ, right? What did I say this morning? We need to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen? The Holy Spirit, yes, we get emotional. We praise God. We jump up and down, we cry, we, we're excited to serve God, amen? Yes. But we also are to worship the Lord and in truth. Yes. We need God's truth. This is the foundation. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about there was a there was a man, there was two men. They built their house. One of them built his house on sand. Same. The other one built his house on a foundation, Come on the rock. Alright? Yes. The Bible tells us that that rock is Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. If you build your house, your relationship on God, on Jesus Christ, on the rock, and remember the word of God represents Jesus Christ. We need his word. We need his truth. Amen? Amen. We need to be grounded on him. Oh, yeah. The man that built his house on sand, he just built his relationship with God on his emotions. Oh, yeah. Just on his emotions, he didn't have a foundation. We all go through trials. We all go through problems, right? You, got, you might get fired from your job. You might go to get some kind of bad health um, report from your doctor. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll have you have a testimony here in a minute, brother. <laughs> we all go through trials. We all go through things, right? Oh yeah. So when the storm came, the storm represents trials yeah, in our lives. So when the trials and the problems come in our life and we're not, uh, our relationship is not grounded on the, on the rock Jesus, guess what happens? We're going to fall. When that storm came and knocked that house down that was built on the sand. But that house that was built on the rock, it said it beat it. The, the, the rain came and the waves came and it stood firm. Amen? So that's the kind of relationship we need with God. So these people, when the sea, when the gospel falls in their life, they are surrounded by rocks and thorns. They base their relationship with God only through an emotional experience. Then thus says the, the Lord. Not rooted deep enough in God's word. So when the sun came up, when trials came in life, they fell off. This is the second one. Now we're going to go to the third soil, the third type of ground. Okay. Let's read Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And some fell among the thorns, and, the, and they sprang up and uh, scorched them. But the others fell on good ground. Sorry, uh, I'm, I got them off track here. <laughs> Let me start over. Verse 7, And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Choked. 
So the other one we read about was the, the stony places right. or the shallow ground. Okay. This one we're reading about the thorns that sprang up. Yes. These feet, these, this seeds fell on good ground, but the weeds and thorns surrounded it. Wow. The kind of peop these kind of people are rooted deep in Jesus and know the importance of studying God's Bible, but are distracted by the material things and entertainment in life. You might have a deep relationship with God. You might be on fire for God. And your seed is growing. Right? It's growing. It's strong. Your relationship with God is strong. But guess what happens? The devil doesn't sleep, right? The devil doesn't sleep. The minute that he sees that you're on fire for God, the minute that he sees that you want to serve and follow God, guess what the devil does? He comes up with a different plan. He says, if this plan didn't work, I know the next plan's going to work. Come on now. <laughs> and we got to be wise as serpents, and as harmless as doves. Yes, Amen? Yes. Really. We got to be wise as serpents, mm. but harmless as doves. Oh, yeah. That's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah. We got to be gentle, but smart at the same time. Yeah. Like what, what is the devil up to? Because it? I know Jesus Christ is stronger. Amen? Mm. Jesus Christ created the devil. Oh, so yeah. he's just, the devil is just an angel. Just an angel. Jesus is God. Oh, Amen? Oh, yeah. So, for those that have a deep relationship with God... Guess what the devil does? He encourages us and inspires us to get caught up in entertainment. Oh, yeah. We invite people to church for an hour and a half, Come maybe on. two hours. Right. For free. For free. Right? Yeah. And it's almost like we have to beg them, right, sometimes. Come on. But we invite somebody over to a football game. <laughs> We invite somebody over to a party, right? We invite somebody, let's go out to the movies tonight. Come on. Everybody be there, right? Oh, yeah. You know, with entertainment in these last days, and I'll read it here in a minute. Did you know what the Bible says? That in the last days, people will care more about entertainment than the ways of God. Come on, come on. I will read it here in a minute. It's true. In the last days, we are in the last days. Oh, yeah. The devil is not just trying to get us to sin and do evil things. Mm -hmm. He's also trying to keep us busy with entertainment. Oh, wow. Well, you might be saying, well, I wouldn't watch the uh, Christian movie. Even with that, the devil is distracting us sometimes. Oh. Entertainment, football, I got to watch every single NFL team, every single college team, oh. every single basketball game. I'm not saying those things are bad. But the devil is using those things to distract mm -hmm. us from spending time with God. Wow. How many of us read the Bible at least 30 minutes a day? Mm -hmm. Amen, brother. How many of us read the Bible every day? And we should. Oh. We need to be grounded in the Word. Mm -hmm. Amen? This is the foundation. <laughs> so when those storms and those trials come, mm -hmm. we'll be able to stand. Amen? Oh, yeah. We need to spend time with God every single day. Yeah. Yes, today is the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. We are to uh, put away secular things mm -hmm. and put our main focus on Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. But every day we are to worship the Lord. Oh, every yeah. day we are to every spend time with God. Oh, yeah. Because the minute you go to work, the minute you go to school, the devil is ready to attack yeah. you. Mm. But if you wake up and you're fed, by the word of God. Word. You're going to be spiritually strong. Amen? Yes. And God's going to be right there with you. You might mess up. Yeah. You might slip here and there. Oh, yeah. But God says, get back up. It's just like up. in a boxing match, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like in a boxing match. Oh, goodness. You get knocked down like the movie Rocky, right? Yeah. He got back up. You got to get back. Got back up. <laughs> the awesome thing about it is the judge is God. Oh, yeah. As long as you stay all 12 rounds in that mm -hmm. fight, Come on. whether you got knocked down the most, mm -hmm. as long as you stay in those 12 rounds, Come on. you're still going to win. Come you're still going to win because Come he's the judge. Yeah. God wants you to hold on. Okay. Let's read about it. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Mm -hmm. 
Second Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 4. This is what it says. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, it says. But know this, that in the last days, let me read that again. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Amen. What did it say right there in the last one? Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And we read in the beginning, it says that in the last days. We're living in the last days, people. We're living in the last days. There are so many things happening that even the, I don't know what you want to call them, scientists, whatever, they don't know. They can't explain everything. They try to have an answer for everything, right? They try to say it was, you know, global warming and all this foolishness that everybody's talking about. The Bible talks about that this world will give birth pains, will have birth pains. What are birth pains? They're like a, a woman that's pregnant. As she gets closer to delivering her baby, her birth pains get stronger and stronger. What do we call this planet? We call it Mother Earth, right? As right before Jesus comes, before he breaks through those clouds and he comes to, the, to, to take us home, amen? The birth pains in this earth will get stronger. Supernatural things are going to happen all around us. And we should praise the Lord instead of be scared. If you're serving the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise Him. Volcanoes happening, tsunamis, earthquakes, yeah. bizarre weather. Yeah. One day it's snowing, the next day it's 100 degrees. Oh, wow. There's some weird things happening around the world. Yes. Yes. The birth pains will get stronger. But these are signs that we're in the last days. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. We are not to give a date when, the Je when Jesus will come. Because the Bible says no one knows the day no. or the hour. No. But, the, but the Bible does say, I will give you signs when I know... To let you know what I'm about to come. Oh, yeah. Amen. So we are to lift our heads up and say, praise God. Praise God. Praise. Uh, we're almost going home. Amen. We're oh, almost going oh, home. Oh. And he's going to take us home. Oh, oh. Where there will be no more death. Thank no you. more crying. Mm -hmm. No more sorrow. Mm -hmm. I wait, I'm 44 years old now, brother. Yeah. <laughs> 44 years old. <laughs> and I feel the... Sometimes I have a hard time getting up. Oh, my so here. <laughs> but uh, God is awesome. God is awesome. So entertainment and material things will choke out your walk with God. Don't allow what God has blessed you with. My daughter, it's awesome. I, just, I didn't even think about it. My, but my daughter shared the story of Job this morning. And the devil told God, well, Job is only serving you okay. because he has all these possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. But Job's relationship with God was so mm. strong. Mm. Even though all that was taken away from him, mm. he still served the Lord. You. If you were to lose everything today, yeah. would you still serve the Lord? <laughs> if you were to lose everything today, mm. would you still serve the Lord? If you were to re get really sick, Mm. If you were to get cancer, will you still oh, serve wow. the Lord? Oh, wow. If somebody very close to you passed away, wow. would you still serve the Lord? <laughs> How deep is your relationship with God today? But Job did not curse God, even though he lost all his material things. Don't let your material things distract you. You might have a nice car. Right. You might have a nice lowrider. <laughs> you might have a nice truck. That's what's in today, right? Oh. The fixed up trucks. <laughs> you might have a nice house. 
You might have nice clothing, you might have a good job that pays a lot, right? right? What if you were to lose all that? Yes. Were you still be serving the Lord? Amen? Yes. yes, the Lord has blessed you with those things. Oh, yeah. And we are to use it for ministry, amen? Oh, yeah. We are to use whatever God has given us for ministry. Oh, yeah. I want to invite y'all guys, the next time we go out, uh, Brother Carlos right here holding the baby. Okay. <laughs> he joined us. He joined me and my wife and my daughter. And we went and parked the lowrider out there on, on the boulevard on Tum Totem. Okay. And we had three boxes of Bibles. Oh. We held up a sign. Oh, yes. Y'all two joined us as well. Hallelujah. Uh, we were out there, and we just stood there, held a sign up that says free Bibles. Come on. And we're standing on the street corners and just giving out Bibles That's like good. crazy. They, they went like crazy. Oh, wow. Use whatever God has given you oh. as ministry. All right. If it's a car, if it's working at the hospital, mm -hmm. working in the health industry, mm -hmm. God, whatever God, talent God has given you, or whatever ministry God has given you, use it. You can reach people wherever you're at. Oh, yeah. Amen? We got to take back what the devil has stole from Thank us. You. Amen? Oh, we got to take back what the devil has stole from us. Oh, yeah. Finally, the fourth one, Matthew 13, oh, verse 8. <clears throat> but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, mm -hmm. and some thirty. Amen? Amen? This seed fell on good soil and was deeply rooted, therefore it produced good fruit. Amen. These kind of people feel deep conviction from God and what it means to follow Him all the way, no matter what. Read your Bible and pray. Become deeply rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Like I said this morning, when we're teenagers, when yeah. we're kids, we don't like being told from our parents what we need to do, right? Yeah. We should be opposite of that. We should say, okay, whatever you're telling me, I know it's for my own good. Come on. It's the same, with, same thing with God. When God, through the Holy Spirit, convicts us of sin and tells you, let go of that. Yeah, let go of this. I have something better for you. Something better. We have to be willing to listen. Good word. We, are willing, we have to be willing to repent of our sins. Amen? There's the Bible says that if we willingly, I can't say that word, if we willingly <laughs> sin, then there remains no sacrifice for your no. sins. That's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah. Meaning, we can't say, well, I'm about to go party tonight, so forgive me, Lord, and I'll be in church tomorrow. Oh, wow. That's purposely sinning. Oh. That's not how it works, brothers and sisters. Does that mean that we're all perfect? No. no none of us here are perfect. But we should strive so. to follow God. We should strive why? Because it hurts God. It hurts. When we sin, it hurts God. Oh. So in your heart, in my heart, I should say, Lord, I don't want to do these things anymore because I know it hurts. It hurts. Help me to change. Mm -hmm. You tell me in your word that you will give me a new heart. Mm -hmm. A new walk. And that's what it means to be baptized. When you are baptized, you die to your old ways. Oh, yeah. You are telling everybody in public, I don't want nothing to do with my old ways. I don't, want it. I don't want nothing to do with the way I've always been all my life. Mm -hmm. Created me a new heart. Yes. That's what the Bible says what it in the book of Psalms. Yes. The Bible says, created me a new heart. And renew. Take out that heart of stone oh, yeah. and give me a heart of flesh. Oh, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You might be hardcore because of the way you were raised. Mm -hmm. You might, have, you might be, have a bad attitude because of the, what you've been through. Been through. That doesn't have to be you no more. 2020, brother. 2020. 2020. <laughs> let God into your heart. Yes. Let us all become that fourth oh, soil. Yeah. Amen? Fourth. Let us all be that fourth type of ground. Oh, we talked about four different types of grounds, right? Mm -hmm. The first one, the seed was planted. The birds came. 
and ate the seed. Don't, don't be part of that first type of soil where you hear the word of God. Oh, yes, that's true, but that's not for me. Christianity is not for me. They're a bunch of hypocrites anyways. Everybody in the church talks about everybody. Yeah, they may. They may, but are we to follow what people do? Or are we to follow what God has us to do? Amen? At the end of the day, at judgment, at judgment day, is between you and God. You can't say, well, my wife didn't go to church, so I didn't go to church. You can't say, my husband didn't want to read the Bible, so I didn't want to read the Bible. At the end of the day, at judgment day, is between you and God. By the way you live for God today, you can be an example for your relatives and friends. Thank you. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. You are a light that shines before the world. Thank you, Lord. Let your light shine. Oh, yeah. Quit hiding your light. Thank you. <laughs> we are not to hide the light. Oh, yeah. We are to let it glow and, and be very bright before the world. Oh, yeah. Let's read our final verse. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Is there anything that's going to separate you from the love of Christ? I pray that nothing separates you from the love of Christ. But in order for your relationship to be stronger, you have to spend more time with Jesus Christ. In order for your marriage to be stronger, you have to spend more time with your spouse than everybody else. Forget about girls' night out and guys' night out. Sometimes there has to be girls' night out and guys' night out. But do you think it's going to be at a club? Or at a bar? No. There's nothing wrong with spending time with the guys. There's nothing wrong with spending time with the girls. But that should be minimal. You should spend more time with your spouse. Yes. Build your relationship up. Your marriage up. Minister to everybody around you. Amen? Amen. And if you're single, God has somebody for you. Oh, yeah. Just ask Him. Oh, yeah. He'll have somebody for you. But that's how our relationship grows stronger. The more time you spend time together, talking to each other, not just spending time together, and both of y'all on your phone, right? <laughs> that's what we do sometimes. And I'm guilty of it sometimes. We are to look at each other and talk to each other. How was your day? How was your day? <laughs> right? And it can be awkward, maybe, because we're not used to doing that. But build your relationship with your spouse, with your wife. If you're dating and you're planning to get married, spend time with your partner. Right? That's how it is with God. How do we expect our relationship to be strong with God if we don't spend time with Him every day? Every day. The Lord says, give me, give me your time. Right? I don't want to say much more, guys, but... It's, it's really important. It's really important that we, we get serious for God in these last days. There's so many things going on. And um, if you were here last Saturday, no, two Saturdays before, we talked about a little bit about prophecy. And we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to do that because the Word of God has so many things for us to know. And for so many things for us to learn. Amen. Because God doesn't just want to motivate us. He also wants to give us truth so we can be grounded in these last days. If any of you guys have ever thought about being baptized, if any of you have ever thought about being baptized and uh, you're wanting to do that, and the Holy Spirit has moved you to be baptized, he will, we can make a, we can plan a date for you to be baptized and to surrender your life to Him. Amen? 
I'm, in, I'm extending that invitation that if you would like to be baptized to come up here and we'll pray with you. I don't believe in baptizing somebody so they can be part of our church. That is not my goal. You're going to a church, great. If you don't have a church, we invite you to come join us at church every Saturday. But my goal is not to make you a member of this church. My goal is to lead you to Jesus Christ. Amen? So the Bible says that we're baptized into Christ. We're not baptized into a church. We're a denomination. That's why we're not denominational. We are not about following a denomination. We don't baptize you into the church. That's what the, that's what the problem is with many preachers today, many pastors and many churches. They want to see how much they can fill their church up. Why? More members, more money. That's not what we're about here. I want to lead you into the ways of Jesus Christ. So if you have ever thought about being baptized, we can plan a day for you to be baptized. Even if you don't come back to this church. I just want to lead you into the ways of Christ. Amen? When we are baptized, we publicly express, I want to die to my old self. And now I want to follow you all the way. So if you would like to be baptized, I would ask you to come up here to the front and we'll pray with you. And maybe you would want your pastor at your church to, to baptize you. We, we, can also, uh, we can also pray for you here and you can let your pastor Extending the welcome up here, we had Brother Carlos be baptized about a month ago, right? All glory to God. And we need to continue to pray for Brother Carlos because when you are baptized, the devil attacks you no more. So y'all continue to pray for uh, Brother Carlos for support. At this time, let us pray and then we will have Brother Isaiah do a little bit more music for us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the word you have shared with us. Lord, help us to be that light that you want us to be. I know that we have failed you many times. I know that we have messed up. But Lord, help us to get back on our feet and do it one, once again. And serve you once again, Lord. Because we know there's people out there that need the gospel. Help us to be that example, Lord. Help us to be grounded in your word. Help us to stand on that foundation, which is the Bible, and your truth that you have for us, Lord. Help us to be strong when those trials do come. Whether we're facing sickness, or we lose somebody, whatever it may be, Lord, help us to be strong and grounded in you. Bless everyone here today. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Isaiah to do a couple of more songs for us, and then we'll dismiss after that. Thank you very much. Certainly, the Lord has given me a little over three years to be here. The doctor report said it wasn't stage one, it wasn't stage two, and it wasn't stage three, and it wasn't stage four. With tears in my eyes, I said, wow. And then the devil came to me and told me, he said, You've been serving the Lord all this time. And here you is the doctor telling you that you have cancer. And it's aggressive cancer. I began to tell the devil in my mind, I said, devil, you're a lie. I'm going to just trust the Lord. And whatever he wants me to do, whatever way he wants to do it, I'm going to follow the Lord. And so... 
I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, he said, I'll be with you. He gave me a good doctor. And he gave me some good nurses. And he gave me a good support team. And he gave me my family. And he gave me people from all around the world praying for me. And today, come on, say today. Today. I'm still here. And every day now to me is another day of life. And that life is to give him praise. And that life is to give him honor. Because he's so worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. When the devil, when sick, when the brother says that, says no, the Lord says yes. And so today, I thank him for the healing. I thank him for what he's done for me. And this is my song today. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Why? Because you cared for me. Yes, you did. In such a special way. And yes, I praise him. And I lift him up.
Testing. <laughs> All right. What happened to the sound? What happened to the sound? <laughs> it was good. Do you have one more for us, brother? One more. Do you have one more? One more. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. shared the story of oh, Job wow. this morning. Mm. And the devil told God, mm. well, Job is only serving you oh, okay. because he has all these possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. But Job's relationship with God was so mm. strong. Mm. Even though all that was taken away from him, mm. he still served the Lord. You. If you were to lose everything today, yeah. would you still serve the Lord? <laughs> If you were to lose everything today, mm -hmm. would you still serve mm -hmm. the Lord? If you were to re get really sick, mm -hmm. if you were to get cancer, would you still oh, serve wow. the Lord? Oh, wow. If somebody very close to you passed away, wow. would you still serve the Lord? <laughs> How deep is your relationship with God today? But Job did not curse God, even though he lost all his material things. Come on. Don't let your material things distract you. Come on. You might have a nice car. Right. You might have a nice lowrider. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a nice truck. That's what's in today, right? Oh. Uh, fixed up trucks. <laughs> you might have a nice house. Come on. 
You might have a nice clothing, you might have a good job that pays a lot, right? right? What if you were to lose all that? Yeah. Would you still be serving the Lord? Amen? Yes. yes, the Lord has blessed you with those things. Oh, yeah. And we are to use it for ministry. Amen? Oh, yeah. We are to use whatever God has given us for ministry. Oh, yeah. I want to invite y'all guys, the next time we go out, uh, Brother Carlos right here, holding the baby. Okay. <laughs> he joined us. He joined me and my wife and my daughter. And we went and parked the lowrider out there on, on the boulevard on Tum Totem. Okay. And we had three boxes of Bibles. Oh. We held up a sign. Oh, yes. Y'all two joined us as well. Uh, we were out there, and we just stood there, held a sign up that says free Bibles. Come on. And we're standing on the street corners and just giving out Bibles That's like good. crazy. They, they went like crazy. Oh, wow. Use whatever God has given you oh. as ministry. Oh. If it's a car, if it's working at the hospital, mm -hmm. working in the health industry. Mm -hmm. God, whatever God, talent God has given you, or whatever ministry God has given you, use it. You can reach people wherever you're at. Oh, yeah. Amen? We got to take back what the devil has stole from Thank us. You. Amen? Oh, you we got to take back what the devil has stole from us. Oh, yeah. Finally, the fourth one, Matthew 13, oh, verse 8. <clears throat> But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, mm -hmm. and some thirty. Amen? Amen? This seed fell on good soil and was deeply rooted, therefore it produced good fruit. Amen. These kind of people feel deep conviction from God and what it means to follow Him all the way, no matter what. Read your Bible and pray. Become deeply rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Like I said this morning, when we're teenagers, when we're kids, we don't like being told from our parents what we need to do, right? Yeah. We should be opposite of that. We should say, okay, whatever you're telling me, I know it's for my own good. Come on. It's the same, way, same thing with God. When God, through the Holy Spirit, convicts us of sin and tells you, let go of that. Yeah, let go of this. I have something better for you. Something better. We have to be willing to listen. Good word. We, are willing, we have to be willing to repent of our sins. Come on. Amen? There's a Bible says that if we willingly, I can't say that word, if we willingly <laughs> sin, then there remains no sacrifice for your no. sins. That's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah. Meaning, we can't say, well, I'm about to go party tonight, so forgive me, Lord, and I'll be in church tomorrow. Oh, wow. That's purposely sinning. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works, brothers and sisters. Does that mean that we're all perfect? No. no none of us here are perfect. But we should strive sure. to follow God. We should strive why? Because it hurts God. It hurts. When we sin, it hurts God. Oh. So when your heart, in my heart, I should say, Lord, I don't want to do these things anymore because I know it hurts. It hurts. Help me to change. Mm -hmm. You tell me in your word that you will give me a new heart. Mm -hmm. A new walk. And that's what it means to be baptized. When you are baptized, you die to your old ways. Oh, yeah. You are telling everybody in public, I don't want nothing to do with my old ways. I don't want, it. I don't want nothing to do with the way I've always been all my life. Mm -hmm. Created me a new heart. Yes. That's what the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Yes. The Bible says, create me a new heart. Amen. Take out that heart of stone oh, and give me a heart of flesh. Oh, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You might be hardcore because of the way you were raised. Mm -hmm. You might have you might be, have a bad attitude because of the, what you've been through. Been through. That doesn't have to be you no more. Twenty twenty, brother. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. <laughs> Let God into your heart. Yes. Let us all become that fourth soil. Oh, yeah. Amen. Fourth. Let us all be that fourth type of ground. We talked about four different types of grounds, right? Mm -hmm. The first one, the seed was planted. The birds came. 
and ate the seed. Don't, don't be part of that first type of soil where you hear the word of God. Oh, yes, that's true, but that's not for me. Christianity is not for me. There are a bunch of hypocrites anyways. Everybody in the church talks about everybody. Yeah, they may. They may, but are we to follow what people do? Or are we to follow what God has us to do? Amen? At the end of the day, at judgment, at judgment day, is between you and God. You can't say, well, my wife didn't go to church, so I didn't go to church. You can't say, my husband didn't want to read the Bible, so I didn't want to read the Bible. At the end of the day, at judgment day, is between you and God. By the way you live for God today, you can be an example for your relatives and friends. Thank you. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. You are a light that shines before the world. Thank you, Lord. Let your light shine. Oh, yeah. Quit hiding your light. Thank you. <laughs> we are not to hide the light. Oh, yeah. We are to let it glow and, and be very bright before the world. Oh, yeah. Let's read our final verse. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall, separate, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Is there anything that's going to separate you from the love of Christ? I pray that nothing separates you from the love of Christ. But in order for your relationship to be stronger, you have to spend more time with Jesus Christ. In order for your marriage to be stronger, you have to spend more time with your spouse than everybody else. Forget about girls' night out and guys' night out. Sometimes there has to be girls' night out and guys' night out. But do you think it's going to be at a club? Or at a bar? No. There's nothing wrong with spending time with the guys. There's nothing wrong with spending time with the girls. But that should be minimal. You should spend more time with your spouse. Yes. Build your relationship up. Your marriage up. Minister to everybody around you. Amen? Amen. And if you're single, God has somebody for you. Oh, yeah. Just ask Him. Oh, yeah. He'll have somebody for you. But that's how our relationship grows stronger. The more time you spend time together, talking to each other, not just spending time together, and both of y'all on those phone, right? <laughs> that's what we do sometimes. And I'm guilty of it sometimes. We are to look at each other and talk to each other. How was your day? How was your day? <laughs> right? And it can be awkward, maybe, because we're not used to doing that. But build your relationship with your spouse, with your wife. If you're dating and you're planning to get married, spend time with your partner. Right? That's how it is with God. How do we expect our relationship to be strong with God if we don't spend time with Him? But this time I'm going to ask Brother Isaiah to do a couple of more songs for us and then we'll dismiss after that. Thank you very much. Certainly the Lord has given me a little over three years to be here. The doctor report said it wasn't stage one, it wasn't stage two, and it wasn't stage three, and it wasn't stage four. With tears in my eyes, I said, wow. And then the devil came to me and told me and said, you've been serving the Lord all this time. And here you is the doctor telling you that you have cancer. And it's aggressive cancer. I began to tell the devil in my mind, I said, devil, you a lie. I'm going to just trust the Lord. And whatever he wants me to do, whatever way he wants to do it, I'm going to follow the Lord. And so, I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, he said, I'll be with you. He gave me a good doctor. And he 
gave me some good nurses. And he gave me a good support team. And he gave me my family. And he gave me people from all around the world praying for me. And today, come on, say today. Today. I'm still here. And every day now to me is another day of life. And that life is to give him praise. And that life is to give him honor because he's so worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. When the devil, when sick, when the brother says that, says no, the Lord says yes. And so today, I thank him for the healing. I thank him for what he done for me. And this is my song today. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Why? Because you cared for me. Yes, you did. In such a special way. And yes, I praise him. And I lift him up.
Yeah, yeah. 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 Testing. <laughs> All right. What happened to the sound? What happened to the sound? <laughs> our service. We want to thank everybody for coming. <coughs> and we have church every Saturday. So y'all are more than welcome. This is my lovely wife, Leanne, if you want to stand. Amen. <laughs> and our lovely daughter, Vanessa. Amen. Amen. If you guys want prayer or Bible study, we'd be more than welcome to do that. Amen. And um, just hit us up on Facebook or, yes. or give us a call. We thank you and God bless you. Amen.